So you said you had a little trial by fire when you first went to China for manufacturing. What were some of the issues you encountered and would tell us to avoid? Um, so many scars. Um, I think we were um, somewhat naive about what it was like to be a small company working with a large company. Right? We, the people who funded or founded Flip all had sort of big company experience before. We had some startup guys that were, but all of our startup experience was on the software side. We had never been a small company trying to convince you know, a, a multi-billion dollar manufacturer to make our product for us. And it was extremely hard. Because of the nature of our product, our manufacturers were in Taiwan. Right? There are historical distributions of manufacturing expertise. Um, the camera business was fundamentally China, or, uh, Japanese. Most of the manufacturers manufactured in Japan. Then they started moving their low-end product out of Japan into China with their own captive factories. And then the Taiwanese got into that business using the first generation of uh, off-the-shelf chips. You know, companies like Zoran, who would actually provide a, uh, a chip you could build a camera around, as opposed to Sony or Canon, who had their own chips they developed in-house. So it just so happened that all the camera manufacturers were Taiwanese guys manufacturing in China. So we went to Taiwan a lot and lot, knocked on a lot of doors. Um, and this, this issue of selling the vision is essentially how we convinced companies to try to take on our product. In our first five years, uh, we probably switched manufacturers four times. And that was extremely painful, extremely dumb. And to be avoided if at all possible. And I would note I was not running manufacturing when we did that. But we were chasing what always seemed like the better deal, a lower price, or we had burnt a relationship because, yeah, we promised you 50,000 units, I know, but we only need another five because our sales didn't line up like we thought. And then they would draw back on their investment in us and we'd find another partner and sell them on the vision again. I think when we became successful, it was a combination of two things. One is we decided to lock down partners. So from the time that we started Flip Video to the end, we had two manufacturing partners in parallel. We never changed them. Um, and we did that because of our focus on agility. And the, the connection there is that we outsourced, as I expect most of you will, a lot of our engineering to our manufacturing partners. If we had to s effectively spin up a new engineering team each time we moved manufacturers, there's a huge loss of knowledge, of communication, of trust there as you get to know a new team. By working with the same team repeatedly, we got all their home telephone numbers, right? We knew them well. We knew how to communicate with them. We knew that they were really good at this and pretty good at that, and no, don't let them do that part. We, we built a team. And so we actually, I think more than many companies, integrated our, our ODM engineering teams and our local manufacturing teams. And most of our hardware engineering for, for the majority of the company's life was, in fact, outsourced. So, I would encourage, you asked me about the, the trials by fire, you know, don't go chasing these uh, short-term wins. The, the value of a long-term relationship is not to be underestimated. It's not to be underestimated in terms of speed of development. It's not to be underestimated in terms of what happens when something goes wrong, right? There's a problem in the product. I have to recall 10,000 units. Was it manufactured wrong? Was it a design flaw? Was it a component flaw? I don't know, but if I don't get these units fixed and back on the shelf in four weeks, I'm out of business. Will your manufacturer take them back and fix them for you and worry, at, worry later about who's going to take the cost? Not in those short-term relationships, right? First, they will negotiate with you a cost and a blame, and then they will agree who pays for shipping, and then they'll t maybe take them back. But if they are expecting to work with you for the next five or ten years, and they're invested in your growth, they'll jump in feet first. If, if you have the sort of relationship you need in order to be successful. So you mentioned some of your product development schedules were about six months or so. Uh, how do you get such fast lead times with taking into account development, like engineering development, and also the long lead times for manufacturers? Uh, did you offload any of that work to have the manufacturers help you out with some of that? Or you know, if you have somebody developing a new screen or that kind of thing, or new components, yeah. Uh, how, how did you manage that? Yeah. I mean, obviously, you can't develop a new chip and ship your product in six months. You can't do a new LCD screen and ship your product in six months. Um, we would spend a lot of time working with our technology providers, the chips, the screens, et cetera, a ahead of the product kickoff. Right? Sharp was our primary partner for screens. 
So we would spend a lot of time with them on the supply side, figuring out what they had coming down the road. So that when we were ready to start a project, we knew that at about the time that we would want to ship, these three options would be available from Sharp. And then we certainly moved fast by offloading a lot of engineering work to the, develop, to the manufacturer or to design consultancies and to do some internally as well. But we also took a, a uh, what we called a lead time driven uh, development technology. So for example, uh, on an existing LCD screen that's in production at that point in time, the lead time was six months from the time you cut the PO to you got the unit. So we would buy the LCD screens when we launched the product. The project, excuse me, when we launched the project. Before we had locked down the design, we went out and bought the components. So the exactly. Right. This is the screen, the longest lead, lead, longest lead item was the screen. So lock down the screen and make the camera work with the screen. If something doesn't work, you change everything else until the screen works. Because we bought it, and now we're going to have to ship it. And, you know, and one of the scary things about our business, and depending on your business, this may be true as well, is we had Christmas, we did 50% of our revenue in Q4 every year. So every year, and every year our growth was like this. So every year our Q4 was bigger than any Q4 we'd ever done before. Which meant in Q2, we'd guess how big Q4 was going to be and spend all the money we had ordering components for Q4 without knowing for sure how many we were going to sell. We effectively had to bet the company every year in April which was scary as shit. Did you have right. to pay for those components up front? Uh, at the beginning, yes. We negotiated deals as we went to sort, you know, get some uh, lines of credit to get, to get better deals. But even without that, we took on the liability, right? Yes, we may not have had the cash flow hit in April, but we signed a purchase order for 100,000 LCD screens or whatever your number might be. Um, and that is extremely risky. This is a, a, a fundamental problem in the hardware business. If you're growing, then every year you're going to sell more units than you sold last year, which means you don't have enough money to pay for those units. It's, it's just a fact of life. It is one of the reasons that we sold out. It's one of the reasons we sold to Cisco. We had just come through the, the financial crash. We had no money. We were going to bet the company yet again. And the thing that scared us so much was that the economy was in the crapper. So were consumers going to buy video cameras this Christmas or not? And it wasn't even Christmas, right? This was May, June. The economy had just collapsed. Would it come back by Christmas or not? Uh, the Lehman crash, whichever year that was. Oh, wait. Um, and that's what drove us to sell to a large extent, was this realization that we, we had won the bet every year. That wasn't going to last forever. 